Hi, Stu Vamick here from Polly's Island, South Carolina. And I have a question for you. Have you ever had the rug unexpectedly pulled out from under your feet? I mean, you think you know where you're going and all of a sudden the course of your life dramatically changes. It's like a lightning bolt that knocks you off your feet and you find yourself on the ground wondering, what just happened to me? We've been studying the life of Martin Luther, Martinus Luther. He was born in 1483 in Eisleben. In an irony of history, he died in the same place that he was born. His father Hans was a coal miner. He worked in the mines of Germany, but he had a gift for management. And over time, he moved the family to Mansfield, where he ended up owning six coal foundries. He had some means, some money, some financial security in his life. And his great dream was to send his son Luther to become a lawyer so that he would be wealthy and be able to support the family as they all got older. Little Martin Luther was a gifted student when he went to school in Eisenach, and finally he enrolled in the University of Erfurt on May of 1501. He's 18 years old. Erfurt is a city of about 20,000 people. There are five great universities in Europe, one in Prague, one in Vienna, Heidelberg, Cologne, and here in Erfurt. It's a big deal. Now, university life is difficult. You wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning, classes start at 6 o'clock, they end at 5 in the evening, lights are out at 8 o'clock. The students slept in large dormitories. It was a difficult, rigorous life. He studied the trivium. The trivium was three basic foundational classes, grammar, logic, and rhetoric the art of persuasion or debate. He also studied arithmetic and astronomy and music, but interestingly, all of the students were required to speak and learn and read in Latin, the language of law, of physicians, of the theologians. So he distinguishes himself so that by the time that he's 20, 21 years old, he has this great education as a lawyer, which is going to have, interestingly, a huge impact on his understanding of the Bible. God was at work in his life beneath the visible surface of what Luther saw as studying in Latin to become a lawyer, to understand how the law works. God was working beneath the surface. God is often silent, but he is never still. So God is at work beneath the surface of Luther's life and he's going to dramatically change him and direct him. And he does that to you and me all the time. We think that there's a crisis or something pulls the rug out of from under us, but God is just trying to get our attention and send us in his direction. So now, it's the summer of 1505. He has his Master of Philosophy. He is entering law school. Hans, his father, is thrilled. Everything is going great. Luther is gaining a reputation as a brilliant student a brilliant mind, a brilliant understanding of the law. And then something happened in June 20th of 1505. We don't know what it was that caused Luther to leave school and suddenly go home in the middle of the lectures of a day. It was a three-day journey back to Mansfield on foot. And on the journey, Luther's sword cut a vein in his groin and he almost died. So something's going wrong in his life. His world is not right. He leaves school right in the middle of the classes and returns home, injures himself. You always carried a sword because of the robbers on the road. He injures himself, almost dies. And then he gets better and he decides it's time to go back to school. So then, in July 2nd of 1505, there is a crisis in his life that changed his life and your life and mine and the course of Western civilization. He's walking from Mansfield back to Erfurt, 53 miles, three mile an hour world. On July 2nd, 1505, he nears this little village of Stoddernheim. It's on the way back to Erfurt. I've been there many, many times. It's nondescript. It's a little town, uh, but the road nonetheless is still there that went from Mansfield to Erfurt. It's in the middle of the day. The sky is getting dark. All of a sudden, there's a tremendous thunderstorm that whips up. Lightning bolts are flashing all around him, and one struck so close that it knocked him to the ground, and it terrified him. He thought he was going to die. And here's what he cries out. Hilf du Sankt Anna. Ich will ein Monk 
Verden. Help me, Saint Anne, and I will become a monk. He makes a deal with Saint Anne to help him. And if you help me, I will become a monk. Now, remember in those days, people were afraid of God. They didn't really approach God. They approached God through the saints, intermediaries. And this is how the people got to God. So Saint Anne is the miner's patron saint. She's the mother of Mary, and, and he would have heard many miners over and over and over again praying to Saint Anne. She was their saint. And he says, if you help me now, I will repay you later. I will give my life to God. Just let me live. Now, he has to go home and tell his father. His father understands that he had worked so hard to get him into school and to pay for school, and he's on the verge of, of, of a great achievement and Luther goes and tells him he's going to throw it all away. His career, his future, family, marriage, children, his dreams. He's going to throw all of it away. He has made a deal with God. Seventeen days later, against his father's wishes, he enters the Augustinian monastery in Erfurt, and the Protestant Reformation begins. His decision changed his life and the history of the world. Beneath the visible surface of what we see is the invisible hand of God always at work, always moving. He may seem silent, but he is never still. These are lightning bolt moments when God unexpectedly intervenes and changes the direction of your life and mine. He knocks us off our feet. We're never again the same. These are defining moments for us. And I should add that these kinds of defining moments always have an element of fear with them. God speaks to us when we're on our knees, when we get knocked off our feet. My greatest moments of hearing from God have been when I have had to crash through great moments of fear in my life. Yeah, God uses the craziness of lightning bolts and flashing light around us and the horrible, horrific sounds of lightning to scare us, to knock us off our feet and lead us to Him. It's the invisible hand of God, and God is working beneath the surface. I hear people say all the time, I feel so disillusioned. I tend to think if I do the right thing uh, and, and think the right thoughts and pray the right prayers that everything will be all right in my life. I'll be comfortable and life will be easy and I'll be fulfilled, but that's not real life. Sooner or later, all of us realize that real life happens to every single one of us. We live in a real world with real people and with real problems. Jesus told us we were going to have lightning bolts in our lives. He said in John 16, 33, I have said these things to you that in you, you may have peace in the world. You will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Here, Jesus is making a bold prediction about our lives. You have 100% chance of finding trouble, he tells us. It might be real close, it might be in the distance, but sooner or later, adversity will knock on the door of every person in this life. Be assured, Jesus said, there will be pain and hardship and difficulty. It's part of life. That lightning might come in the form of a phone call in the middle of the night. Uh, it might come from sitting across the desk of a school counselor tapping on the file of your 15-year-old. It might come after a lifetime of employment when you talk to your boss and he says, you're no longer needed. It might come from the uneasy look in the eye of your doctor. I don't know what form it takes, Jesus said, but it will come. And when it does, it will stretch you to your absolute limit. Lightning bolts are the great leveler of life. They have no respect of age, race, net worth, degrees earned, how we look, what kind of homes we live in, what kind of job we have, what kind of spiritual maturity we have. Jesus simply said, in this world, you will find adversity, lightning bolts. Jesus is telling us, I know how hard, hard can get and how dark, dark can be. And in the middle of that kind of darkness, Jesus says, no matter what life throws at you, no matter how hard or awful or hurtful, you don't have to cave in to fear. You don't have to bail out or give up or just grit your teeth, escape anxiety in some way. Jesus said, you don't have to find some way. There is 
another way. And I want to show you what it is. And we'll see that in what Jesus said and in what happened to the life of Martin Luther. Let me suggest some practical ways that we can overcome the lightning bolts in our lives, those unexpected things that come into our lives, no matter how impossible or helpless or alone you might feel. First, lightning bolts simplify and bring clarity to our lives. They let us know what's really important, what really matters, what is really significant, what counts. They simplify and put life in perspective. And this is what's happening to Martin Luther. What really matters in my life? Well, I guess it's God and I guess it's my life that I'm alive. I'll give my life to him. I often tell people who are going through difficult times because this has been my experience. If you're really having a really, really bad day, go and visit the children's ward of your local hospital. Walk down the hallway. Look in the rooms. And I guarantee you, because it's my experience, when you get to the end of that hall, you will be so thankful that your problem seems so small and insignificant. Lightning bolts tend to clarify and put life into perspective. They separate the essentials from the non-essentials. And this is what Luther's learning about in his life. You know, I'll just give you a little tip. When people come to me, they're in deep depression. The first thing I ask them, and people have come back to me and said, man, that really, really helped me a lot, is the first thing you need to do is eat right, sleep right, and exercise, and read the Psalms. Eat right, sleep right, exercise, and read the Psalms. Psalm 3, Thou, O Lord, are a shield about me. You're my glory. You're the lifter of my head. You will take care of me. You will build a fortress around me. You do those three things, and I think you'll find an immediate change of emotion inside each of us. So question, where is God using a lightning bolt to clarify and prioritize your life of what's essential and important? What is God trying to tell you? There's another thing that lightning bolts do. They change us. They build character and hope inside of us. Romans chapter 5, verse 3. Not only that, Paul says, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces, catch this, endurance. Endurance produces character, and character produces hope. Lightning bolts, adversity. It's the primary agent of change to bring character and hope to our lives. I know we rarely see change as a result of a success in our lives. You know that? Successes don't change us very much. They tend to puff us up and distort reality and breed pride and independence. We don't learn much about our lives through success. I mean, we love success, but we don't learn much about it. Adversity is all about building character and hope. God is blasting away. He's exposing the underdeveloped areas of our lives. That which makes us weak, he wants to make strong. A friend of mine, an older fellow, a business owner, once told me that my best lessons in life have been my most costly lessons. Adversity produces suffering, which produces endurance, which produces hope and character inside of us. You know, there's a a fellow that I knew, he's no longer uh, living. He was 80 years old and he had run 40 marathons. Hot Harry was his name. He used to run around the lake and I, I used to run around uh, the lake uh, with him. Hot Harry, yeah. Everybody knew Hot Harry, 80 years old and still running marathons. He would say it takes a lifetime to produce endurance. And that endurance produces a confidence and a character and a hope inside of me. You know, hope is like a muscle. The more we work that hope, the stronger we get. It produces character, who we are. It produces hope inside of us, a confidence that we can live above the line of despair. Adversity builds us and makes us stronger. We become overcomers. So question, where is God using lightning bolts in your life to change you right now, to make you strong, to pull you closer to him, and to, so that you can see life and Christ more clearly? And finally, lightning bolts uh, unify and build relationship between us and God and, and each other. You know, we went through that pandemic and we had certain signals or signs or symbols that we had to all do. There was social distancing. There was the wearing of masks. We sort of separated and isolated and alienated each other. We were in a sort of a quarantine kind of existence. And we could tell inside of us, in, inherently with inside of us, that we were not to be separated as people. There was this desire to come back together. And I remember what it was like when people could gather again in their homes and in the churches and their workplaces. Because God made us for a relationship. 
question. Why did God create you and me? Because God loves relationship. God loves relationship in the Holy Trinity between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And God created us to have relationship with Him and that we could have a relationship with each other. So these lightning bolts not only bring us closer to God, but they bring us closer to each other. It is in the monastery that Luther sees that he was made for relationship with God and relationship with each other. I often tell people in the middle of lightning bolt experiences and adversity, get your team together. Who's your team? Well, adversity has this strange capacity to bring people together. Your team are those people that you feel safe about. They're your safe relationships. You can tell them anything. They can see anything. They will not judge you. They will support you. They will be honest with you. They want your best interest in mind. They're little platoons like in the army, and in them we build deeper and deeper relationships. Christianity was never designed to be a solo sport. No one would ever try to climb Mount Everest alone. It's a team sport. Get your team around you. The question that someone asked me one time was, who would be your pallbearers at your funeral? Great question. Line those people up, build relationships with them. Because again, we know that success tends to separate us. It divides us. It alienates us. I can't measure up to that person. You know, I often say uh, uh, in this series that if I had uh, was standing in the church and I had people come up and take a half a minute to tell their greatest success story and go back to their seat, we'd all feel isolated and alone. Uh, it would feel like losers. But if each person came up and took a half a minute to tell their greatest failure, their greatest brokenness, their hurt, it would unify us. We'd stay there all day long. We'd become family. Community would break out. There would be tenderness and vulnerability and relationship. Adversity brings us closer to each other. So in Luther's life, lightning bolts clarified, changed, and ultimately brought relationship. He saw the utter pain of the solitary life of the monastery, the silent life, so that when he did reform the church, he built into it relationship between God, community, and family. And my question is, where in the context of lightning bolts do you get your team? Who is your team? Luther said, live as if Christ died yesterday, rose this morning, and is coming back tomorrow. Lightning bolts are holy moments to get to the heart of the matter. They bring clarity and change and relationship. We're not in this alone. Lightning bolts ask what's really important, what really matters. What do I need to leave behind and what do I need to move towards when I get unexpectedly ambushed? And it is this sense of the presence of God in the midst of the lightning bolts that never again allows us to be the same. We become new creations altogether. Look for those lightning bolts. Don't miss them. And if they knock you off your horse or knock you down to the ground, remember God's is at work. The invisible hand of God is at work inside of you, clarifying, changing, and building relationships.